Hey folks, Captain Matt here again, and I'm here with Mark uh, today, and um, Mark, uh, I'm wondering what in the world you're doing here. I well, see fins all over the place, I'll, I see I'll, I'll, some loaded with dirt, some with worms, what are you doing? Mark, can't you see how exhausted I am? <laughs> so what we're gonna, what I wanna show you today yep. is when you have a bin, a breeder bin that is too wet to use a sifter on, how do you separate the bedding with all those cocoons in it from the worms so that you can put the worms in the next bedding? Yep. And so here's how we do it. Worm castings are the best fertilizer on the planet and can revitalize soils that have been ravaged by chemical fertilizers. Captain Matt is not your average worm farmer. This year, he'll produce 10 tons of worm castings in his garage to sell in his local community. Matt wants to mentor you to help you achieve your worm goals. He doesn't throw big words or complicated information at you. He's a farmer with dirt under his fingernails. He'll teach you proven approaches that work. Subscribe now and then head over to wormpeople.com to jumpstart your worm farming journey. So, you know, you know Mark, over right. here, yeah. I, have, I have three rows of breeder bins. Yeah. Each row has six bins in it. Yeah. And I rotate them. This was this week. Right. Next week, I'll have another six that I'll bring out, yeah. and the next week, another one. But as I, as I take this one and separate the worms from the bedding, then I take these breeder worms mm -hmm. and reset them and put them in there for another three-week cycle. Okay, so the main goal is they've already bred. They've already bred. Already bred, yeah. correct. And now it's, you're trying to get the worms out. No, I'm not trying. You are. I'm doing it. And it's not that I'm taking the worms out. I'm leaving the worms in. Okay. I'm separating the bedding from the worms. Okay. Now, most of the time, you'd be able to take it and put it in a sifter, yeah. and that would separate everything. But when you're breeding, you're using a very high level of moisture. Yeah. Matter of fact, these are 90% moisture level. So it's too wet. So to it's go way too the right, way too wet to go through. You it. know what's crazy is. Just standing here, I can hear the worms. Oh yeah, I yeah. can hear them moving. Wow, <laughs> they're eating. <laughs> wow. So what I've done for the past three hours is I brought these bins. These are the ones marked in yellow. Yeah. All the, everything's marked and color coded. Yeah. And I brought them over here. I set up lights because mm -hmm. the light is what will push the worms down. And what I've been doing for the past three hours is I've been walking around and I'll give you an example of what I did. I'll walk around and I'll just slowly t separate the worms from the bedding. It's a slow process. I mean, it's a real slow process, but it's a very rewarding process at the same time. So I, right now, because it's such a small pile, there's only a little bit that I can get. Yep. But what I'll do next is I'll come over here and I'll do the, here, if you hold the bucket mark, yep. I'll do the same thing over here. Wow. Okay. Look at all and, those worms. Right. Remember, I've been at this. All that over there was in here, wow. and I've just separated them. Wow. But all the worms have stayed right here. If any worms get in, I check them out at the end, and and I just keep going. Oh, whoops! Poor little baby. Whoa. So okay. what's what what's in here? Like what's that's bedding and cocoons. So these there's cocoons. Oh, Correct, okay. cocoons so and bedding. Yes, yeah. and we're going to look at the cocoons yeah. in a minute. But matter of fact, let's just look at this pile here, okay, and see what we can find. Um, okay, they're they're jumping out of me. All right, okay. so I've taken most of the cocoons yeah. are mostly over there. Yeah. Yeah. We only have that much soil left. Yeah. And you have to remember, this is only a layer of dirt. This, look at the number of cocoons in here. Here's one cocoon, two cocoons, three cocoons. Oh, I see like a- Four cocoons. Three of them right there. Three right over there. Now this is another cocoon here. If we keep, look, here's another cocoon here. Here's one, here's a second one over here. Here's another cocoon right here. Yeah. And, and as, so that's just on one very slim, worms. Sli it's, it's a oh. lot of worms, but just yeah. you have to imagine how many cocoons are over there because right. it was this deep and right. it's just saturated right. with cocoons. Right. And so we're separating the two. 
yeah. and a wormy got in there, so we've got to put him back where he belongs. And then I just go over here and I do the same thing here. And I separate them. We'll leave that guy alone for a little while. We'll come here now. Now, this one is already, I worked it a little more than the others, but this one is ready. When it gets to this point, what we do is we take a brush because the worms are down there intertwined right now. So as I brush them, they're, they're pretty much locked together. They're not going anywhere. But we're just getting the final cocoon. I don't want to lose any cocoons. You know, if I put all this, this bedding back in with the worms for the next setup, I'm going to be putting cocoons in there. Babies are going to be in with the adults, and the adults are going to make sure the babies get all the food they want, and it will slow down production. And so these guys are almost ready, but we'll leave that for a little That's while. A whole, that is all worms. That's wow. each each bin has 500 worms, wow. and uh, 500 worms. It's 200 worms per square foot for breeding. Yeah. And folks, we're we're. I'm not going to give. I'm not trying to teach you anything about breeding tonight because we are. I am ferociously working on the course that I'm going to teach. And we're gonna, or I'll teach it, or maybe one of our mentors might teach it, I'm not even sure. But we're working on the course to show you how to breed. So um, tonight, we're not showing you what you need to do to breed. What we're doing is sharing with you the excitement of when you do start breeding, right. what takes place. Right. And tonight is just the perfect picture. Here, here we go again, Mark. Let's just look at this one for a minute, all right? Here, we have we have lights. Let's get some light in here. All right. Let's see. We're down to almost no so no bedding left. And if my eyes would adjust a little bit, we would start to see cocoons. There's one there. There's one there. And if I just keep moving around, we're just there's one there. If we keep moving around, we'll just keep seeing them. But. I'm gonna sweep this guy just to show you. Again, the worms are all in a knot. We're sweeping it, and this is not the final sweep. We're gonna come back one more time, and uh, put those in there. And we'll just sweep it, and we'll leave those there, and we'll continue around. Now, let's, let's do this. Let's come over to this pile over here. You can put that down, Mark. All right, so what we did, these were three weeks old. We're ready. We're separating the bedding and the cocoons from the worms because the worms are going into a new cycle. It's all ready, ready to go into the bins. And so these guys are going back to work, but we're now going to take all their cocoons and we're going to set them up for hatching. I'm guesstimating tonight that we have at least a thousand cocoons in each one of these bins after three weeks. Not bad, 6,000 cocoons after three weeks. And if we had 6,000 cocoons, Mark, and there are two worms in every cocoon, right. how many would that be? I was as good at English, not math. 12,000 <laughs> baby worms and maybe more, even, yeah. you know? But now let's just look here because here's where the cocoons are crazy. Here's a cocoon, here's a cocoon. Here, oh, let's do this first. Let me. I, I don't want anyone thinking I set this up. Let's stir it up. Oh, I saw a worm there, Mark. Whoops, whoops. He needs to go over there. All right, so we just stirred it up. Okay, let's look now. Here's a cocoon. Whoops. I just... A lot of them are dirty, so you can't say... Here's a cocoon. 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 I could do this all night. I could just do say, here's a cocoon, here's a cocoon. It, they are just so outrageously uh, um, filled with, this bedding is cocoon-filled bedding. And when it hatches, all of us now we have more worms than, uh, uh, I, now the question is what to do with all the worms. I don't know what to do with them all. I might, no, we have plans for all of them. And a lot of them are gonna go in here in the six bins that we're over 6,000 worms in a bin right now because I reloaded them again today with about just short of 1,000 per bin. And uh, so a lot of these, we have, we have this whole set from last week 
is in a heated room right now. They started to hatch. Those will come out. These will go in and we'll just keep the cycle going. And uh, at a certain point, one of the larger bins will become a bulk bin for babies and we're just gonna grow out all our babies. Would you call this castings? Or not? Um, yes, this is castings. This castings, is three, so. three weeks with 500. Um, it's probably not pure castings because you only had 500 worms in here for three weeks. Mm -hmm. But it's, I'll tell you, for my garden, I would be thrilled to put that in my garden because of the amount of castings right. involved. So are you going to replace any of this with the new cocoons in there? Are you going to add more or is you just going to keep it no, just no. as it is? I'm, we're going we're gonna to keep it just like it is until they hatch. Yep. We're going to wet them down a little because they like a lot of moisture. We're going to yep. warm them up. Once they hatch, soil. We'll, we'll raise them for a week or two until they get a little body to them because mm -hmm. they're so tiny when they come out. And once I feel they're strong enough, then we will probably we will put them in these bins here, and they will start to grow. And then what do you do with all the soil after? You no, 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 that goes in too. Oh, Everything, the whole thing, whole goes, thing in goes in there. And, and so start over fresh. Correct. What is short of being um, castings here will make up for it when we put it in there, and the worms will again populate and inoculate the soil filled with castings and all the microbials with it. So it's, an exci it's it, just exciting. And I, I just wanted to share it with you because the reality is this. Some of you are looking forward saying, wow, I'd really like to breed. We're trying to, we're, I'm, I'm baiting you is what I'm doing. And I'm using worms for my bait. Uh, we're baiting you. We want you to know we're working hard on a course to teach you how to do this. So that's it, folks, for tonight. Uh, uh, thank you so much for listening. Mark, any other thoughts or questions? Hey, Jude, do you have any thoughts? Did I miss anything? I think you did really good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, that's it, folks, for tonight. Captain Matt signing out. God bless you guys, and we'll see you real soon. Subscribe now, and then head over to wormpeople.com to jumpstart your worm farming journey.